talk about today just like, you know, I'm gonna use this idea of boxing. Anybody here watching boxing? Or at least a little familiar with boxing? Y'all know what a jab is? Throw, throw, throw a jab real quick for me. Go ahead, throw, throw a quick jab. Go like that. Go like that. Jab, throw me a hook. You got a hook, now we'll hook a Okay, all right, so y'all know a little bit about boxing. A little bit, you know what I'm saying? You, you may have not even known you knew about it. So basically, when you box, right, it's, it's obviously, you know, violin or whatever, but it's also an art, right? And so in order to survive and to get to the point that I did, um, and even just to give a little further uh, detail and background, I rap, I do spoken word. Um, I graduated from NYU from my master's degree. I got in public administration. Um, I worked in halfway houses as a case manager, working with people on parole, probation. Uh, then after that, I transitioned uh, to working in the Department of Corrections in New York City, specifically in one of the biggest jail industry complexes in the country, in Rikers Island. Uh, yeah, y'all heard of Rikers Island before? Yeah, so anything you heard about Rikers, it's true. All right, <laughs> and, and even worse. Um, but basically, like, I did that work, now I'm teaching college because I feel like it's important to be able to bring, you know, two sides of the story. Like, it's good to, you know, whatever you learn from, like, a certain environment that you grow up, it's like, okay, let me take this and let me not lose all the savvy that comes from it because there is good things that come from it, like the hustle or just, like, certain, in, you know, instinctual things that you may need in order to just survive and get by. Like, in, meta in more, more metaphorical senses, it also applies in the business world. Okay, because we already know it'd be cutthroat out here. Try and go for your major, try, whatever it is, you gotta have some savvy to you. Um, same thing in regards to like, you know, going to school, higher education, working in these fields, like a lot of cutthroat stuff. A lot of, a lot of the mentality you could take from like, let's say like the streets or whatever, like growing up in a certain place, like you can still apply that into the workplace. So the education gotta be there, of course, but it's always good to have a little background and other things as well. Um, so that's a quick break, uh, brief and intro as to myself. This specific presentation, I called it first round knockout, 12 round marathon. Why? There's 12 rounds in boxing and all of y'all are student leaders, correct? I'm gonna assume all of y'all are student leaders because I'm gonna put it like this, because I, I was in school and government for like, pretty much like all four years of my undergrad experience. So honestly, that changed my whole everything. Like if I didn't get involved in school and government, I can tell you I wouldn't be even close to where I'm at today. Um, and so I understand the art of like, you gotta go to school and you gotta make sure you're doing good and excelling in these classes because if you don't get if you don't got that certain GPA, you can't even have a student government position, right? And then you also have the other side of it where it's like you're thinking about your major, you're thinking about your career. You gotta go to school, but then you gotta do this internship, and then you actually gotta have a job that's paying for your bills and you know what I'm saying. So you're like multitasking like three, four, five different things. So like I wanna kind of just dive into some of the things that could probably help people from a, a boxing perspective, right? Um, so Andre Ward, he said, I didn't need to get knocked out to know the fortitude that I had in me, right? So it's like this idea of um, a smart man learns from his mistakes, but a wise man learns from the mistakes of others, right? You don't wanna have to always experience hardship. If you can avoid it, right? Like hardship is gonna come, but if I can avoid it, I'm gonna go ahead and do so. And, and if I can learn from other people's experiences and situations, that would be the wiser and more intelligible thing to do because ain't nobody trying to get knocked out out here, you know what I'm saying? Um, in regards to rules of the ring, some of the general rules, anytime you go into any platform or arena, right, whether it be in the workspace, in school, whatever, you gotta know the rules. You can't get into any sport, any, any whatever, and not understand what, what are the, um, the tactics, what are the main points, things of that nature. So in boxing, usually 12, three minute rounds in total. You can win by knockout, you can win by outscoring the person. Uh, you can potentially draw with the person. And then, you know, illegal tactics could lead to disqualification. Nobody wants to see that. How does this apply to class? Okay. Um, the credit system obviously could vary from one school to the next, but generally speaking, we're talking about like four to five years from college, right? You want to have this amount of time taken out from college, you know that you have to stay above a certain GPA. Um, potentially, you know, disciplinary access can happen from poor, poor performances. And of course, you can still spend more than just the quote unquote average for four to five years and stuff like that. Ways you could potentially lose the fight because everybody wants to talk about winning. Like, yo, yeah, I'm out here, I'm winning, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm that dude, right? But then what happens if you take one of these right here? How much is fine? And you know, sometimes you learn more from the losses than you do from the wins. I've had a lot of losses in my life. 
You know what I'm saying? And for me, I can honestly say that, that the losses definitely shape my winning experiences, but it don't mean that I like to lose. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm gonna assume that a lot of people don't like to lose. So one of the ways you can lose, of course, is cheating, right? Cutting corners is the reason why I have, um, for example, this pick right here, the guy getting hit on the, on the left side, his name is um, Antonio, Antonio Margarito. So, you know, this is a kind of like sweet justice kind of picture because Cotto, the guy on the right, this was the, the result of the first fight. Now, he got pretty beat up bad, right? Um, and in boxing, it's a sport when, when you actually suffer hits like that, it could, it, it could mess up your whole livelihood. They ended up finding that Margarito had plaster underneath his gloves, which is basically like concrete. It's like cement. Um, imagine somebody hitting you with cement. Yeah, I think I will get knocked out too. <laughs> Fight number two, this is what happened to Margarito. Cotto came back, he already knew Margarito was a cheater, et cetera, et cetera, and basically he put the paws on him and said, I mean, hallelujah, I'm gonna bless you, okay? Um, long story short, cheaters, it always comes back around. Um, and I'm putting this out there because sometimes in, on the road to, to greatness, and on, it's like, um, like Kanye said, on the road to riches and diamond rings, right? Like, like you might find yourself doing things that are not necessarily indicative of who you really are. And it may be that the culture and the things around you dictating like, damn, I gotta, I gotta cut this corner, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Stay true to yourself. Stay true to yourself. And it's so much easier said than done. Like, right now you're in the collegiate space and everything is like nice and, you know, innocent and shiny. You know, even though like there's a level of like no innocence in college, right? Like, people is out here doing stuff, but it's like, it only gets more room once you step out of the college lines, right? So, you, now, now that we know some of the ways that you can lose, um, one thing that you want to learn is how to win, right? So one way to win is the jab. An example of a jab, let's throw out the jab again real quick, just like that. But if we want to compare the, the jab to how this applies to education, the jab to me would be like, you know, doing the simple things, right? The jab is like the most elementary, you know, fundamental punch in boxing. Basically, it's the same thing in, in school. You would attend all your classes because sometimes I know a student, you know, meetings may be happening and it's like, yo, I'm about to not go to this class right here real quick. I did it. I ain't gonna hold you. Right? I did it before. But, obviously, if you could still maintain a, a level of, you know, good standard with your classes, you know, if there's emergencies or things that you really have to take out for, that's one thing. Um, but overall, trying to keep that balance. Showing up on time, whether it be for school, whether it be for student government, or uh, whatever you're trying to get into, literally showing up is like, that's, that's already the majority of the battle right there. Okay, once you show up, it's like everything else, you know, it starts to work itself out. Paying attention, so paying attention to the little details of things around you. Um, asking questions when you do and don't understand things. Even if you do understand things, sometimes you want to re-emphasize things just so that the person providing that information understands that you understand. So it's kind of giving them that validation, like, yo, you're say what you're saying is really sticking and resonating with me right now, right? Um, participating frequently and building relationships with professors, peers, and tutors. When you're throwing out the jab, you keep throwing out the jab, you're basically putting it in, in the person's mind, this is the type of person that I am. Don't, you know, like if there's any reason that somebody would, would want to sweep you off your feet or like give you some kind of resistance or, or you know, push you away, it's like the jab is keeping that at bay. You know what I'm saying? And automatically it validates who you become in testimony or that. The slip. Muhammad Ali was really known for that. So, who, who could give me an example of a slip? So a slip is like if somebody tries to jab at me and then I just go like that. I just weave it. Right? Like what would you think is an example of a slip? Like, like academic wise. Like think about a scenario that you probably should not be doing that at the expense of your schooling and things of that nature, but you're like, I made you look. So I'm gonna give you some, some giveaways right here. Right? <laughs> so I got you, I got you, that's what we're here for. Friends asking you to cheat, slip, call, oh, make you look, right? Yeah, you're not touching me, okay? So sometimes you might think you're looking out for a friend. That one time be the time that like, it all comes crumbling down. So making sure that obviously you can slip things like that, not engaging with a problematic professor. Look, now that I'm teaching, I see things on the other side now. Things start to make sense now because I was a student one time not too long ago and you know, sometimes there might be faculty that aren't necessarily 
being um meeting you where you're at. That's fine. Just try and work with it. It's better to just sometimes finesse, finagle, move around as opposed to just letting that get to you. Um, not making outside events priority over school. So, yo, it's Friday night. Let's go turn up. You know what I'm saying? But I got this five page paper. I got to submit like next week. You know, like right there is kind of making some decisions. So slipping those things. You know what I'm saying? Um, and fighting temptations to not do work and, and things of that nature. So if the jab is a settle punch, what is the knockout? Like I said, you got the uppercut, let's do that uppercut motion again. Going up like that, right? You got the cross, like that coming, coming with the opposite hand. Like if you're, if you're a right and you jab with the left, basically it's the opposite hand of whatever you was jabbing with, and then the hook, <laughs> you go like that, right? So those are more power punches. Power punches would be examples of like getting involved on campus, doing internships, uh, working jobs relevant to your career, building connections, and improving your all around self, right? Like living your best life, basically. Um, the reality is that you want to take care of yourself in all facets of, of life. You want to make sure the fundamentals is right, just do the little things, you know, attend classes, attend the student government meetings, be involved on campus in whatever way, shape, or form. But that's kind of like the stuff that everybody's just expected to do. So that's why it's a jab. But when we're talking about power punches, okay, now how do I distinguish myself? How do I di differentiate myself from everybody else? That's what, like, whatever type of internships you do, the connections you got, all of that, it matters. Because when I got into NYU, like, that was based off connections I got from when I did certain internships. You know, that, that literally got me into NYU. Or, like, you know, when I worked for the Department of Corrections, connections that I built through other internships got me into that kind of opportunity as well. Um, so that's basically what I had to get to, what, what I had to get to in order to get to where I'm at. Um, what do you do when everything you have done? How do I put it? What do you do when you have done everything right and still think that you're losing, right? So sometimes you could feel like, yo, I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing, and somehow, some way, I'm still not feeling as successful as I want to be, right? At that point, you can only leave it out. So God, the universe, whatever, whatever powers you believe are outside of yourself, that's who you leave it to, right? Sometimes you literally just gotta let the judges decide. If it goes the distance, if you didn't get the early knockout, right? Like, like you thought, oh man, I'm going into the, into this interview and I'm already gonna get the job like by next week, and it didn't work out like that. You thought you was getting like the early knockout or something within this, you know, scenario, and it gets elongated. Let me take a step back. Let me recalibrate. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you can get anxious to try and be great, but greatness is a process. A lot of people want to go from, they, they just want the A and the Z, they just want the Z, but they're not willing to go through all the other letters in the alphabet. You know what I'm saying? Like, it takes time, it takes process, and at the end of the day, like, you have to learn how to enjoy that process because this life is once, is once. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, whatever you go through, let's say on a collegiate level, let's, let's look at it at a, at a micro level, um, micro level. That's like on a smaller scale level, in some way, shape, or form, it can mirror what your future's gonna look like on a bigger scale. You get what I'm saying? So, you wanna let the judges decide, and overall, you know what I'm saying, you come out, champ, you're winning, you're doing your thing, you got your degree, you're like, yo, my mom made it, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what you wanna do, and obviously, you get, um, you get certain accolades and prizes, so obviously your bachelor's degree, um, your masters, if, if you're thinking about going for your masters, I do highly encourage that. Um, and then also, just the, the connects and the people that you meet, all of that makes a big difference in your life. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end my presentation with a spoken word. Or rap, y'all cool with that? Okay, I'm, I'm going to spit some bars. I want you to repeat after me. I'm going to repeat after me. You got to have Bars. Bars. Okay. You got to have bars. You got to have bars. Bars. Okay. So um, so this right here is basically kind of just talking a little bit of um of my background. I'm basically summing up like my life experience into this um into this right here. But I'll I'll let you be the judge of it. Everybody in my ear like damn go ahead goddamn just to leave my man. You've already done things in the chief life span, can a mean with a decent to me right hand? In the end, cause you care, but you know I ain't never see you leave a man on the floor. 
I say, yeah, because at times I say, man on the flow is the man who now stands in the spit in this flow. So you ain't got to understand it, because this man with the plan can me and command it. That I be was demanded, that Salih be a means to this station commanding. So the God never planned it, and for me, I will speed through this life till I ran it. Sheep always sleeps in the creeps, he gets phasing. Be so elite was in me, I was damaged. My jigger, I figure I'm bigger, line figures wanna go and pull the trigger, wine rivers spilling out from the side, out till I die, doing anything just to see a sponsor. Every day, still I'm thinking I could crash, looking at this past, any British people fall, learning how the chrome was curled up in the boy. You used to, to think that I was trash, now I'm answering my call. When they just see me rolling, everybody gon' stop and then notice that I'm living these dreams out this night they call life. When I wake up, I'm gon' notice this dream, it don't care, it don't fight fair. Even if injustice is right there, when I tweet, no, it's all from components. Opponents placed in the right. Either way, I keep the ground, I'm consistent. Try to take my life, I'm resistant. I'm a force, but of course, they don't like that. I ain't asked for permission. When I die, you I'm gon' die a legend. Nothing's gon' be a legend. Young go in the making, go hold that, you know that. Stand there with reverence. And this one is a recent one out there. I was gonna do this for uh, South By. I'm my ancestors' wildest dreams coming through. I'm my ancestors' wildest dreams coming to fruition. My people come from places where we have rotten conditions. According to the bureaus, I'm supposed to be a statistic. Analytics call me criminal for my birth or existence. I'm out here with a blade, some got a clock for resistance. I'm just trying to stay safe from shock of bone ballistic. The media try to ruin us with shots at our image. They don't show us going to hard, but only shots of ballistics. We on the front page, it look like a gun range. Call a brother Doug Strange, one white smoke the cocaine. College data plug, man, any model ball, man. We know to play sports, all state, me no cage. Quick to hook a brother up with Paris State Greens. People who are higher up just want to stay green. Opioid and epidemic like the crack scene, they want us to stay folk or want us to stay fiends. All these politicians just be talking, don't be walking on this political jogging, cover up many of your caucus. Never saw with issues, less in need of our support, otherwise we up in court. They be running for a caucus, genocidal, then it's turn suicidal, living life on survival. Put their hand on the Bible, money remain the idol, office remains idle, asking for an inch now, we never get a mile. Our people be sobbing, all of this got me throbbing. Youngest began robbing, we have no Batman and Robin, they done killed all our heroes. Memory of them zero, homie the same jungle and lion tigers and sparrow. School to prison, pipeline to pipe dreams. The prison got no bike lines, cause it will pipe fiends. Homie on this side, lose me while in your might see. A lot of stuff in days, I'm reserved for the night scene. You'll see some brothers getting murdered up, homie stabbed up. you see some youngins getting jumped out, getting grabbed up. Get sexually, get sexually assaulted and get told to man up. And if you don't man up, then you might just hang up on everything. Everything is everything. Food calls you wavering. Promise your life, suffer brats, reinvents slavery. Get them while they're young, hyper suspension, expulsions. We don't keep them ignorant, education, give convulsions. Anytime they think about school, they think of trauma. Tears were shed from the disappointment of their mama. Teacher once told them the level amounts to nothing. That teacher up in the future faces the student now with a gun. If you want to follow me on IG, it's um, <laughs> put it out there abstract underscore Cabrera. Okay, so definitely a pleasure. Uh, without further ado, I want you to clap it up for my homegirl right here, Lyrical Faith.